If you could meet the energy needs of over 5 million people with almost no pollution by investing up to $34 billion in capital, would you do it? Denmark has a little less than 5.9 million people and is giving a resounding yes to this question. Even though recycling your bottles and not leaving your TV on standby are good practices, it's becoming clear that bigger, more drastic changes are needed to fix the climate crisis. We all know that green energy is likely to be one of the keys to people's future. If it works, it will mean a change in society that will affect everyone on the planet. We need to look into a future where we are much less dependent on gas and actually any fuel from other countries. Today's video reveals Denmark's $34 billion green energy island. Stay with us to the end of this video and you will be grateful you did. Let's get started. Denmark will build the first energy islands in the world, which will use the huge wind resources in the North and Baltic seas. The energy islands will serve as hubs that make it easier to connect the energy systems around the two seas to the energy systems that use offshore wind power. As a matter of fact, some huge projects have already been done in this area. The solar park in China's Tengger Desert is 16 square miles big. South Korea uses a similar sized area to get energy from waves. They built a wall to make Suwa Lake, which uses tidal power. A single large wind farm off the west coast of the UK powers about 600,000 homes, and Canada is about to open the world's biggest green hydrogen plant. On the other hand, Denmark will go one step further and build an entire offshore island to make a huge step toward green energy in the country. The Danish government plans to build an island that will be 120,000 square meters or around 20 football fields, costing $34 billion. The island will have high sea walls on three sides and a mooring area for boats to service the equipment it houses on the fourth side. The man-made structure will be a sizable floating landmass tethered at a location surrounded by wind turbines 50 miles off the Danish coast. With an exclusive focus on renewable energy, it will initially be able to power 3 million houses which is somewhat more than the 2.7 million households in Denmark as of now. Even better, that 3 million figure refers to the first production phase. Long-term growth in the island's ability to supply electricity is anticipated to reach a point where it can power more than 9 million homes. That translates to an initial energy production of roughly 3 gigawatts that eventually rises to almost 10 gigawatts. Everything fits into a bigger scheme. Early in 2021, Denmark's ecologically-minded government declared that by 2050, it would completely phase out fossil fuels, having previously been the top oil producer in the EU. They have already turned down other permission to explore oil in their North Sea regions. The energy island is meant to be the next development after the 40 gallons of wind energy that Denmark currently produces. It will serve a variety of functions. One is to serve as a focal point for over 200 wind turbines flanking the main site. Because they may be larger and normally utilize higher wind speeds when they are placed near the sea, turbines are more effective when they are there. There will be enormous turbines. They could all stand 184 meters tall like the Space Needle in Seattle. There will be drawbacks in addition to the benefits they will have on the environment, such as the impact of their production and their eventual obsolescence. According to some research, once the structures are put in place, they serve as a haven for fish and other marine life like mussels and oysters. They can, of course, also eat birds. The enormous amounts of wind energy generated on the island will mostly be used to power a sizable green hydrogen factory. Since wind energy is so prevalent at sea, electricity may be effectively used to split water molecules and liberate hydrogen. Electrolysis is a method for generating hydrogen from water. In essence, the current is passed through the liquid, causing the water to react at the positively charged anode, releasing oxygen gas and positively charged hydrogen atoms in the process. The hydrogen can return to the negatively charged cathode thanks to a permeable membrane separating the two components. Overall, the reaction produces completely safe oxygen at one end and hydrogen gas at the other. The entire reaction is essentially free of greenhouse gases and other pollutants when the electricity required to power, it comes from a green source, like in this example from the wind turbines. You would still be exchanging one form of energy for another without producing green energy, of course. The creation of the power utilized in the electrolysis would already have harmed the environment, and you would also waste some of that energy due to reaction inefficiencies. With this particular ingenious combination, 
environmental harm is almost entirely restricted to the construction sites for wind turbines, the island, and any necessary support infrastructure. If produced in such a clean fashion, that hydrogen can be used in various applications other than only providing energy for homes. This involves creating green fuel for airplanes and ammonia fuel that may be used to run ships in an eco-friendly manner. From a green perspective, using aviation fuel is especially appealing. The generation of fuel using this approach can also take carbon dioxide from the air as part of the production cycle, adding to the environmental advantages even if airplanes add a lot of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Longer-term plans call for using the island's hydrogen to power industrial facilities and automobiles. The offshore island may turn out to be a valuable asset for Denmark with long-term economic and environmental advantages. Sweden, a neighboring country, has already developed a method for using garbage to produce fuel to the point where it currently imports waste and exports fuel, earning revenue on both ends. In a similar manner, Denmark will use massive undersea pipes to pump its petroleum produced on offshore islands back to land so that it may be used for both domestic use and export which will be to the nation's financial advantage. As a renewable energy source, the fuel might command a higher price than its prior oil production. There are rumors of interest from Germany and the Netherlands. Dan Jorgensen, a climate minister, stated about the project. When everything is said and done, the 10 gigawatts will produce considerably more clean energy than our country can consume. So this is part of a strategy to help other countries accomplish their targets. Additionally, he stated that once the initial capital investment phase is complete, the state anticipates the project to be extremely profitable. When everything is finished, the island will still be slightly more than half state-owned, but it will still have certain aspects of private enterprise because it is anticipated that 49% of the asset will be sold off. Even though the island is currently expected to be operational by 2033, this is still very much a long-term plan. However, Many are already raising concerns about whether or not that deadline can be met. Jorgensen views 51% state ownership as the ideal middle ground, since it retains overall state authority while allowing the utilization of private expertise. Even the start of construction is still years away, with a proposed start date of 2026 after further technical planning, investor searches, evaluations of the project's environmental impact, and surveys of the level of demand among prospective energy consumers. Although the precise location is known to be somewhere out to sea to the west of the country's Jutland Peninsula, it is being kept a secret at this early stage. This will likely be the most expensive building product in Danish history, which is perhaps not unexpected. The Danish wind turbine sector has now taken a significant next step. We were leading on land, then we took the step offshore, and now we're taking the next step with energy islands, so it'll retain the Danish industry in a pioneering position, according to Professor Jacob Ostergaard of the Technical University of Denmark. The green revolution in Denmark is already well underway. Of all, the nation already produces more wind energy than the entire EU combined. Strong legal frameworks exist for sustainable forests, renewable fuels, and biodiversity. Future energy reports will monitor progress toward carbon neutrality, a major policy objective for 2050. Even so, it's not Denmark's sole sizable energy project. Along with deciding to build this island, the nation's leaders also agreed to a second project on Bornholm, a natural island in the Baltic Sea to the east of the nation that will also be used to produce green energy. Would you like to see initiatives like these implemented in your community? Comment below with your answer and let us know. If this video is insightful, please go on and like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell button for more of our updates.